how often do we ask God to give us the Holy Spirit? That last line in the Gospel. This is an icon, a Spanish icon of the child Jesus. And it's here uh, to represent our prayers for James Foley. He's the journalist who's a captive in Syria, and uh, he grew up in Wilkesboro, graduated from Kingswood High School, and many, many of us know his parents, Dr. John and Diane Foley. So we want to keep praying for, for James, for his safe, safe return. This week, uh, I think the whole world has had its focus on uh, the birth of Prince George. And uh, everybody's just so, so excited. Uh, Prince William and, and Kate seem like such a young, lovely young couple. And so we truly wish them well. A child has been born into the world. And everybody is, is grateful. And uh, isn't, it, isn't it wonderful how we in the colonies now can, can really, isn't it really, when you think of it, that, that, that see how uh, the whole idea of, of people coming together, a child has been born into the world, and we wish everyone well. You know, the other thing, uh, do you notice this absolute fascination even by people with no faith or the secular media in the papacy. They, are you aware of that? Everybody seems mesmerized and very much attracted to uh, the successor of St. Peter. Uh, go back to when Pope Benedict retired and then all the attention and following the conclave. Uh, extraordinary. There's something there. There's something almost magnetic about the successor of St. Peter, and now with, with Pope Francis. Uh, I know we have a lot of people here this morning, but yesterday Pope Francis had a million people uh, in Rio uh, along the, the Coca Cabana. They were a million people, most of them younger than me. Would you believe that? And, and uh, absolutely, but everybody's fascinated by this man uh, who took the name Francis. And this is, uh, Father Dick gave this to me. It says, preach the gospel at all times, use words if necessary. That's the word, that's a quote from St. Francis of Assisi. And I think our new Pope Francis is doing just that. He's, he's not just telling us what to do, he's living the gospel. He's going into the slums, he's visiting prisons, he's going among drug addict, and he's inviting everybody to Christ. He's not rejecting people. Uh, and, and so I think that's why he is such uh, an attractive successor of Peter, because he, he, he's living. He, the rubber meets the road. I do want to mention and thank you people of, you know, the little sister we had here last week, Sister Maria, 82 years old, and she lived in a trailer on the Navajo Reservation in New Mexico and is working with the Navajo, the same people that our patroness, St. Catherine Drexel, uh, worked with and, and, and devoted her whole life to the Native Americans and the black people. Uh, you people came through. You came across. Guess how much she got? Over $7,000. That's the last time she's speaking here. <laughs> oh, but that's that she got so yeah. So uh, uh, but that that's the gospel. And and we we're, 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 I've already called the diocese, I want to make sure all of that goes to Sister Maria and to the Navajo. That's where we want it to go. So I want to thank you for that. That's so so good. The uh, I keep telling you that this lectionary is a masterpiece. The liturgists take different parts of the Bible and put it together with a theme. And the theme today, as you can see, is persistence in prayer. You know, someone comes to your door at midnight 
and I want to get up. Persistence. And Moses bargaining with God. Have you ever bargained with God? You ever do that? God, if you just give me this, I promise you that's bargaining with God. Yeah, so you're trying to make a deal with God. Please, just one. Just give me this one, but I promise. Uh, but Moses had this intimacy. He could talk to God. It wasn't like some distant figure. You remember Tevye in, in The Fiddler on the Roof? The intimacy he had with God. Remember that movie? If I were a rich man, would it change some vast eternal plan? If I were a wealthy man, he was talking to God. And if we could just get that intimacy, if anything you can remember this morning, remember this. God is not the man upstairs. Now, people will say to me, I don't know why, you must be much closer to the man upstairs than I am. See, that's not Christianity. See, if God is some man upstairs, that's a deity. That God is this, this being in a distance who created everything and then just abandoned us. And maybe if we beg him, he'll intervene once in a while. That's the God of the philosophers. That's deism, theism. If you want. But that's not Christianity. Christianity is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we live within the Trinity. And the Trinity lives within us. We live in God, and God lives in us. Uh, the, the preface for this Mass, right out of St. Paul, in Him we live and move and have our very being. You cannot be separated from God. You can't. The fact that you're breathing right now, the fact that I'm talking... It means that we're connected to God. That God is keeping us alive. The Creator is keeping us alive. We wouldn't exist if we were separated. We cannot be separated from God. And so instead of going upstairs, go within. It's all in the Scriptures, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the physical body, the temple of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit within us. Jesus says, if you love me, and keep my word, my Father will love you, and we will come and we will make our dwelling place within you. See? So God, we live in God, God lives in us. Uh, the Spirit's in us, reunited to Christ. That's why we're Christians. We share His life. That's not symbolic. We are the body of Christ. And the Father envelops us and shares His life with us and keeps us alive forever eternal life. There it is. So God is not upstairs. So if you keep that in mind, when we pray, we got to pray. We can't pray alone. We can't pray by ourselves. The only way we can pray is together, united to Christ. Everything goes to the Father through the Son. We do it when I hold up the host through Him with Him, in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we address it to the Father. So we can only pray to the Father through the Son. And we're united to the Son. So when we pray, if you can do this, become aware that you're united to Christ. You are part of His body. We're all part of His body. And the Holy Spirit lives inside you, inside your body. St. Paul even says, we don't pray, it's the Spirit within us praying. We're praying within the Trinity. See? Get out of the head. Prayer is a love affair with God. I'm a celibate priest. But let me just say this. When you're making love, you're not up in your head. You understand what I'm saying? You're not dissecting it and analyzing it and saying... When you're, when you're making love, you're loving somebody. Prayer is a love affair with God. So we've got to get out of our heads and into the heart. I did this with you last year. I want to do it again. You can begin by getting into your body 
was to go back to our Jewish roots. The word for God, for the Jewish people, is Yahweh. And they had such respect for the name of God, they would never say it. They would never say it. They would say Lord or Adonai, but they would never say Yahweh. But scholars are telling us now that Yahweh comes from breath, the breath of God within us. Just, just, just hear someone sleeping. It's the breath of God. Begin with that. Get into your body. Get out of your head. And then love. Let God love you and love God in return. Let's begin. Our Father. That is so British. He didn't say that. He didn't call God Father. You know what he called him? Abba. Abba. And you go to Israel today and the, and the daddies come home and the little kids run up to their dad. Abba, Abba, Abba. It's the same word. It's the word of a child speaking to his dad. That's how intimate it is. See, it's not up in the head. It's this love affair. It's this trust. So just begin with God holding you in his arms. He's your Abba. Or, if you want, you can be the baby in the womb. You're living in God. And God is feeding you. And you're secure and warm. Get into that intimacy when you pray. Our Father. Abba. Holy is your name. The Jewish people wouldn't even say it. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Wherever God's will is being done, that's where the kingdom is. On earth as it is in heaven. You know what heaven is? Heaven is enjoying God. That's what the beatific vision, just enjoying God. But we can, it can begin here. The glimpses of it can begin here in prayer. And every now and then God will give us the grace to call contemplation. It just happens. And we can just, it's not in the mind, but we simply are aware that we're united to God. We're one with God. Forgive us as we forgive. That is foundational to the gospel. You all, I just sounds awful, but you almost have to sin to get it. And we all do. It, it's when we sin and then we receive mercy and forgiveness, then we just got to pass it on. Just pass it on. Don't, don't keep it. Pass it on. I've been forgiven, so now I freely forgive. It's a conduit. See? Just let it flow through you. That's what it's all about. Forgive us as we forgive. And subject us not to the test. Lead us not into temptation. The French is much better to come back. Don't let us stumble. Don't let us fall. We're going to be tempted, but don't let us fall. So all I'm just saying, folks, get into the Trinity and, and know that God is not upstairs. God is within, and we're within God. There's no separation. That's Christianity. That's why Christ came. 